we're down at Surf Incubator and we're following up with Russ on what's been going on with Project Tin Can. I hear little bits uh, out there in the Twitter sphere, and but I wanted to get the real story, the real follow up, because you guys were at Tin Can Alley at MLearn Con, yep. and you're getting ready for DevLearn. What's what's going to happen? What can we expect? Yeah, well, from the perspective of DevLearn, um, Tin Can Alley will be back, bigger, better, more awesome. You know, all the usual. <laughs> the um, and the big news in Tin Can in general is that the .95 standard is out. It's updated. It's not that different, um, but it's different in some key ways that are going to be very useful for people creating new tin can content. In particular, before there was a constrained list of verbs and a constrained list of activity types you could work with, but now anyone can come up with their own verbs and their own activity types um, and, and put them in their statements, which allows for a much richer ecosystem. Um, it also means we're moving closer to whatever the f final version of tin can will look like and the closer we get the less the standard should change so we should see more and more adoption which is what we're seeing the lots and lots of people are right. building tin can into things they're building right now so right now is a pretty important time uh, for tin can to kind of see mm -hmm. who's really coming on board yep. what uh, applications I know that Trivantis recently I did a thing mm -hmm. on them they just recently said that their next version is going to support tin can. There's been yep. some uh, LMS folks, and you guys have been working with a few people, and that's yep. exciting. Yeah, now is definitely the time to, if you're a tool builder, if you build handmade learning content, any of this stuff, is the time to start thinking about doing a, at least a small pilot project with tin can, seeing what flexibility it gives you, and trying to think of new areas to apply it to. Because previously, someone with a very social application there was no way to map that onto SCORM and onto an LMS, at least in a way that let you do analytics. The, um, whereas now you just send some new tin can statements and it's opening up whole new frontiers. Nice. So um, if someone was kind of out there on the fence a little bit trying to mm -hmm. figure out um, whether tin can was something that they should be paying attention mm -hmm. to or how they should be kind of starting to engage, what kind of advice would you give them on that? Um, I mean, it's on the paying attention to thing. Everyone should, who's doing things with learning content should be at least aware of Tin Can. Not necessarily diving all the way in, um, but if you're looking at ways to start dipping your toe in the puddle, so to speak, the um, I'd probably start by looking at um, some of the tools that are starting to report Tin Can. For instance, we have Articulate Storyline is one of the big adopters for early. Though I think they, I'm not sure if they've updated for 0.95 yet, but of course they're going to because they committed to tin can going forward um, the and start seeing how people are using it more and more documentation is being produced including uh, storytelling scenarios for possibilities of how to use tin can um, the uh, Rustici's uh, tin can AI.com website has some of that and we're releasing more and more of that as well the um, and I mean, it's, the spec is dry in a lot of ways. It, we're still organizing it better and better, making it easier to read. But at the same time, so many people, especially on the spec calls, but elsewhere after they've read through the spec, looked at the examples and gone, wait, I can make a statement that says this. I could never talk about that before in my analytics. Right. I could never record that in, a consist in any way that anyone else could ever read it. And it, suddenly people are just going, wait, I can write this statement, this tool can write this statement, and we can bring all those together and suddenly we can understand things that are happening that you just couldn't do before. Um, and I think, I think, so I think dry as it is at times, take a look over the, the, the standard, take a look at some of the examples, um, try to find, look at the wikis that have just thorough documentation. Um, a lot of it's hard slogging, but it's very rewarding. So what, is that a geek level of five on one to five, or do I need to call somebody like you to help me figure that out if I'm just like an instructional um, designer at an organization? The I wouldn't say geek level of five. If you wanted to really look through the entire standard and such, but the standard, if you look at the end, there's a number of, in the addendums, there's a number of just examples on the wikis, there are various examples. A lot of the blog posts have sort of natural language statements because one of the things that Tin Can is designed to do is to reflect how people t already talk about learning. So you say something like you say, this person took this quiz and got this score and there was this instructor and all that can go in a Tin Can statement. But you can also say, this person read this content 
which was authored by this person, which mm. is something you couldn't say before right. with learning technologies, really. Not in, not in combine it with the quiz information, which right. is what we can do now. Well, it's pretty exciting. I'm looking forward to Vegas. Yes. <laughs> and um, we will ever. talk about some of the stuff that happens in Vegas. Uh, right. I appreciate you guys uh, continuing to, to help everybody understand what's going on. Thanks. And thank you.